Hello and welcome to the post-production workflow of my audio. And this is just my workflow, so you don't have to agree with everything. But um, I thought it would be very interesting. And I wanted to show you specifically these two clips because the one is without the fathead and the other one is with the fathead. So what I would do, um, I just loaded these two clips into Reaper and this is the audio program of my choice. I love it. It's huge and you can do a lot of different things with it. So I, uh, whenever I go into Reaper and I have my audio in it, I would actually uh, just do some uh, presets and I would actually go to uh, view floating mixer master and then I would actually go down here where you can see the meter and let's assume that you want to um, you want to export the audio for YouTube so for YouTube you don't want to be too loud but also you don't want to be too you know not you, you don't want your audio to be barely noticeable so what you need to do is you will set your, um, how do I say that? The border where the clipping starts has to be about minus 13. Why minus 13? Well, YouTube has um, their uh, maximum target loudness, I guess, is between minus 13 dB and minus 14 dB. LUFS, uh, meaning loudness units full scale. So I'll just make a right click right here and I'm gonna fetch this window from the other screen. And as you can see, here's a display offset, display offset um, 13 dB. This actually means minus 13 dB, so that's perfect. I wanna see the RMS only. Um, and I want to keep the rest as is. So this zero, this line on zero is not zero dB. This is minus 13 dB. And whenever I get over it, that means that my audio for YouTube is too loud and therefore YouTube will make sure it, uh, you know, it will make it quieter by some, I think, compressors or anything like that. Something like that. So what I will do, as I said, is I would uh, set this to minus 13 dB. So this border on, on the zero becomes minus 13. But for now, I just want to get rid of the master mixer. And I really um, think that you should watch um, tutorials on Reaper from Kenny Joya. He has a great channel and explaining everything in detail. Um, but that's not what we will do today. So I wanted to show you these two clips. Now, this here is without the fat head. Let's take a listen. Uh, raising the level. So uh, that is without the fat head. Now, let's see what um, this will do with the noise floor. So I'm going to be quiet now so you can see what the noise floor is and we can analyze that. Okay, let's pause right here and let's take a listen on the fat head. Now this audio is with the fat head included. Keep in mind there is nothing else. I didn't do any compression or any EQ. This is just the audio as it came in. This is well, totally raw. Fat head. And actually let's do a little noise floor analysis. So I'm gonna shut up now and you can actually listen to the noise floor. Okay, so the reason I mentioned the noise floor is because 
I wanted to do a comparison between these two because just by eye looking at them, you can actually see that the waveform of the fat head um, attached to the microphone is a little bit smaller and it has to do with the audio being amplified more and thus you don't need as much gain resulting in less um, noise in your audio. So let's do a comparison and we will do this almost scientifically because I'm just gonna play the noise over and over and I'm gonna go to the effects and I will choose my EQ from Reaper which is this one because it can do a little bit more and I want to subtract the noise from my voice which isn't always the biggest uh, the, the best method but uh, we just want to do a noise floor analysis and that's why I want to build a noise profile and I want to play it over and over again. So let's play. And I want to make sure to let it play through some Sometimes, as you can see, it slowly builds this uh, noise profile and it takes a few seconds to do that. The longer you let it run, or if you can see any changes in the waveforms here, that means it's still building up, but I think that's enough now. So let's copy this and then we will actually get this in the second track which is the oops which isn't the fat head this is the audio without it i'm just gonna paste it here i don't want that noise profile but i might close this down just for now um so let's ch i think let's change in and out points to this yeah that's the noise so let's go to effects uh automatically build the noise profile And you can see it's still building up. So we aren't quite done yet. Of course, it depends on the noise um, that you have while analyzing it. Later on, there can, there can be some noises that you don't see in here. But that's a pretty good starting point. Okay, so let's pause right here and I want to get the second window just to show you the comparison. Because in the graph we can, we might be able to see that um, a little bit clearer. Um, and it should be obvious why I mentioned that the fathead is much more than just a, uh, an amplifier. So you can see, actually you can see it right away. Uh, this is without the fathead, and you can see down here that there is um, the noise floor actually goes to about I would say nine thousand hertz 
kind of like eight to nine thousand hertz and if you take a look at the track with the fat head which is this one here you can see that it only goes to about 2k maybe uh, okay there you can see it it's 2220 hertz and there's a little spike right here which is about 2630 hertz so after that there is actually no noise um, that you can see or hear and if you take a look at this curve this curve um, is without the fat head you can actually see that there's a lot of spiking going on in the noise and it's not as it's it's actually really really bad compared to the fat head the fat head doesn't have that spiking it does have a few uh, spikes of course but it's uh it's totally different from this one right here so this is a total mess compared to this one and you can actually see that the uh, curve is um i would say it has a few spikes of a few big spikes in here but if um after 230 hertz which is here you can see that the curve actually i will see that say that in english i think it's deteriorate actually you can see it go down uh, it flattens the curve now it actually doesn't flatten the curve it just you know takes the curve way more down with the fat head than without so that is actually the visual uh side of things and let's go back to oh actually i need to get rid of this and i don't want to have the noise reduction on right now because i want to show you something more than just these two windows so let's take a listen some more to these two com uh, to the these two examples so this is without this the will do head. with the noise floor so i'm going to be quiet now so you can see what the noise floor is and we can analyze that Okay, and this is with the analysis. Fat so head. I'm gonna shut up now, and you can actually listen to the noise floor. Okay, so let's go back to my audio workflow let's forget about this track right here i just don't want to use um, the track without the fat head so let's concentrate on that one that is the one with the fat head and i would i would suggest that um, as i said in the in the uh, video that uh, you always record some room tone or some noises because you can actually subtract that from your voice I wouldn't suggest that um, every time you work on audio because it sometimes destroys the voice um, and you have to be very careful to use that. But in some cases, um, if you can't do anything about that noise, that's something you should consider doing. So I would actually go to my effects, get rid of the compressor right here. And then I would choose a plugin from isotope which is the denoise i think it's that one let's see yep exactly and this one does work um as the the one that i showed you before so let's just mark the noise make sure it's in toggle repeat so we will play back the noise 
and then I will have to click learn and then play. Oh no, sorry. But then I would have to play it and then click learn. I would actually use it for dialogue in surgical. This is very um, precise and I will leave the threshold. Actually, you can mess with these settings um, to your liking. So there's no right or wrong. There's just too much and too little. So let's play. Let's play the voice A actually. noise floor analysis. So I'm going to shut up. Let's bring it down. Minus 20 and let's take a, a listen noise now. noise floor analysis. So I'm going to shut up now and you can actually listen to the noise floor. Okay, that doesn't, didn't help. So let's You listen to the noise floor. You listen to the noise floor. And as you can hear, it sounds a lot better. So um, then I would actually see if there's anything in the audio that I don't like. Uh, for example, if I have a lot of spikes in there, I would just go there and take a look if they are too big, if they clip um, or anything. All right. And now That's you right. might you might hear me a lot better. This thing between the microphone and the cable. This okay, thing it sounds, between... sounds a little loud, so I'm going to just make it a little quieter. This thing, put this thing between. And you might ask why I just don't take the compressor and compress it down so it would get rid of these spikes. The reason is... Um, I don't want my compressor to work that hard. And if there are some spikes that are obviously too loud, um, I want to get rid of them first because my next step before I do any compression, uh, compression, I want to I get, so I want to get rid of all these spikes before I get, go into compression uh, because before I do compression, I want to normalize this. So before I go to compression, I want to make sure I get my spikes um, down as much as possible. I don't do that uh, with every spike, just with the ones that are obviously about to clip. Um, but now it looks okay, I would say. But let's take a so listen that now. That is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for you. Okay, doesn't sound too bad. So let's uh, see what we can do. And as I said, I wanted to compress it. But before I compress it, I want to do a, uh, a EQ. Oops. Uh, 
I want to use the one from Reaper because I have a preset in here and I want to use that preset. This is called D-curve. And what a D-curve does is, as you can see here, the first uh, frequency is basically a high pass at 40, um, 84 hertz, uh, meaning that it will get rid of all the things below 84 hertz. Actually, you want to listen to your sound on studio headphones so you don't have any bassy things in it because bass um, happens, I think, until 80 hertz or something like that. So um, you won't be able to hear it as bad in your studio um, ear. So you won't be able to hear it as bad in your studio headphones, but um, it's always a good idea to get rid of some lower frequencies because some headphones like the, um, what are they called? Well, there are certain brands that will um, nevertheless increase the bass. So you want to get rid of the bass before you're um, mastering your track because every production every company has its different um, amplification in the lower bands and you want to bring out the best neutral sound so that um, the, uh, the difference is only in the earphones or in the headphones that uh, people wear so you want to make sure that uh, you don't have some rumbling going on and that's why I use these uh, these settings. If you want to know more about the D-curve, I highly suggest you watch some of um, Bacon Tree's videos. This is a YouTube channel, and this guy is just awesome. He knows a lot of stuff that's about audio and uh, mixing, and sound in general so i highly highly uh, recommend watching his channel and his name is uh, buck moore so buck moore if you're watching this video uh thank you for showing me the d curve i use it all the time it's it's great i love it so um another setting is about 113.9 hertz um, I just, you know, took it down a little bit because that's the frequency where uh, my voice is a little bit bassy and I just want to keep some of that warmth, but I don't want it to be overly noticeable. And the, the most important part here is number three. Number three is about 466 hertz. And I would actually... Uh, Maybe I will go down to about 7 uh, dB of gain reduction because these bands, as you can see, it's a pretty wide curve. And the reason for that is uh, it gets rid of all the boxiness uh, in my audio. Because I'm in a small studio, I have boxiness all around me though i treated my walls a little bit with some sound panels um but there are some reflections and some boxiness things that i can't get rid of in uh the recording unless i use um this right here so you might be wondering why there's uh there's actually um, a spike in about 7,100 hertz. This is the frequency where you have a lot of sibilance going on. Um, I know that's that sounds a bit counterintuitive because that's, as I said, the frequency that a lot of sibilance happens. But um, I found out that, uh, well, Buck Moore was right when he said that he did that because he wanted to let the uh, voice cut through some of the sound effects and the music more. And that's just the way to go. Um, again, don't overdo it. I just want to have it subtle. So I'm going to go down to about two 
db of gain. Let's see. Bring it down to 0 0.5. I think that's about good. Let's take a listen to the noise reduced and equalized audio. This is um, that what it is sounds what like. You don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic. Okay, so let's take a look um, how it sounds without the EQ. Um, that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is um, that is, is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same. So you can see that it takes a little bit of the boxiness away and a little bit of the rumbling um, under 80 hertz. Actually, let's try it out and go to about let's go about to about 100 hertz just just to get the comparison. Um, that this is, is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. And this um, is that with. is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You I think it sounds a little bit flat, so uh, not flat, but a, a little bit thin. So let's take it to about uh, 90 hertz. Um, that this is, is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. And this um, is with. That is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. Okay, actually, let's go back to about 80, 84. Let's go to 85. Let's take a listen. This is um, with That the is EQ. what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. Okay, let's see what we can do with the 130 hertz. Um, that is better. what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic microphone, so I can still use this one. But uh, for your NTG2, you want to use the fat head, well, the normal fat head. And actually, let's do a little noise floor analysis. So I'm going to shut up now and you can actually listen to the noise floor. OK, so let's listen with it. Not enabled this is without the second band at 120, 120. That is what hertz. you don't want to buy for. And this um, is and that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't. Okay. Um, that zero. is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic microphone, so I can still use this one. But uh, for your NTG2, you want to use the fat head. Actually, I like that because it takes away uh, some of that boxiness, some of that uh, low rumble, but it still has some war uh, warmth in the voice. Um, I think there's not a lot of sibilance in there. Tom, so let's that take is a listen. what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic microphone, so I can still use this one. But uh, for your NTG2... I don't think that sounds okay. So the next step would be to normalize. Um, basically... Um, I heard that from a lot of other YouTubers, um, they normalize this. Um, I have to say, I don't know if normalizing in Reaper happens pre or post fader, meaning that uh, if I normalize this entire track, um, 
if it was pre-fader or if it was pre-fx actually um, it would uh, you know make it louder before i apply the effects so usually i uh, well i tend to normalize my clips but only at the end of my workflow because this is a effects chain it will start from here and then go down and that's pretty cool because let's do some compression let's do some compression first and then we will take a look at normalizing it oops that's the wrong one get rid of it yeah let's get that one and because i know my levels were at minus 18 being the lowest and minus 12 the average i want to go to about minus well minus 18 ish to set the threshold and i want to go to a ratio about two to one because i want to keep it nat as natural as possible um i want to release 150 milliseconds attack at about four milliseconds and i don't want to have auto makeup just yet so Tom, let's that listen. is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic microphone, so I can still use this one. But uh, for your NTG2, you want to use the Fathead, well, the normal Fathead. And Actually, let's do a little noise floor analysis. So I'm gonna shut up now and you can tell that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG. As you can see, if I turn down the ratio to about three. Tom, that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG. It reduces it a lot more. Um, and to keep it natural, I want to have it, uh, well, between two and three. Um, that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You so let's take a look around here um, because I want to know how much it reduces uh, the signal so I can bring it back up uh, because I won't use auto makeup. Um, I will that do that is manually. What you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. Okay, the biggest spike was about 2.2. So let's bring 2.2 back. Let's, let's, Tom, that let's is listen. what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a and remember, a compressor doesn't make your signal louder. A compressor, as the name says, uh, suppress, uh, compresses your signal, so therefore it makes it uh, less loud. It makes it, it uh, compresses it down. And the reason uh, why people think it makes it uh, louder is because you would actually go to, uh, or some of the compressors have automatic uh, makeup gain which is auto makeup right here. And uh, it will sound louder because it makes up um, the, the spikes it, uh, it compressed. But what it does is basically it reduces the um, dynamic of the voice being the loudest and the lowest part of the voice, bringing it together. So even uh, if you whisper, um, you know you can hear it in a movie so it's not, it's not really quiet uh well it's quiet but it's not as quiet as it normally would be because there's a huge difference of um, people you know screaming um talking or you know just whispering 
and by reducing that dynamic range you bring it closer together so you can hear the entire range in a very small um, scale so let's say at about minus 12 to minus 6 db which is only a dynamic range of minus uh, of uh, 6 db right i think so anyway so let's continue um I think that if you take and a that listen is right what now, you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want... There's something in the voice that out there I don't like. So let's copy the EQ, paste it, and then go to... Factory uh, default, so I want to have... Just one low shelf. No, I actually want to have a high pass. Tom, that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This okay, I can flip it. Uh, so let's try something else. Let's try a band. Um, that is let's see if, if let's see if I can find a frequency that I don't like and just uh, um, that is what you out. don't want to buy for your NTG2 you don't want to buy the fathead phantom for your NTG2 this is very important because I made the same mistake but on the other hand I have a dynamic microphone so I can still use this one but uh, for your NTG2 you want to use the fathead well, the normal fathead. I think the lower band is a problem here. So let's go back to uh, this one. And let's see what we can do here. Um, that is what you don't want to buy for you. Also, I think I should widen this one up just a bit. Um, that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. Um, that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic microphone, so I can still use this one. But uh, for your NTG2, you want to use the fathead, well, the normal fathead. And actually, let's do a little noise floor analysis. So I'm going to shut up now and you can actually listen to the noise floor. Um, that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important. Okay, I think I've found something. So let's get back to number two. And reduce um, it some more. That is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead. Exactly, that's the frequency right here. Well, um, that is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. Okay, I think it's at 118, 118 hertz. So let's bring it down just um, a little bit. That is what you don't want to buy. Because I want to still preserve some of the warmth in the voice, and I don't um, want to overdo it. That is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to. And let's get um, back to number three. That is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic microphone, so I can still use this one. But uh, for your NTG2, you want to use the fathead, well, the normal fathead. And actually, let's do a little noise floor analysis. So I'm going to... 
Okay, let's actually flip this band. I can do that. Tom, that is what you don't want to buy for your anti G2. Let's do that again. Tom, that is what hands. you don't want to buy for your anti G2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your anti G2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic microphone, so I can still use this one. But uh, for. Okay. The thing is, you still hear some rebound from the uh, some reverb actually from the uh, walls, but uh, I think that's as good as it gets. Um, and that's also the reason why you shouldn't uh, sit in front of a wall and have the microphone pointed at you. So rather point the microphone down um, than at you, because uh, the voice reflects from from the wall that is back uh, that is on the back of me into the microphone much faster than it uh, would if you you know turned the microphone from uh, if you took the microphone and just um, held it over the head actually over the mouth Let's take a listen without Tom, that it. That is what you don't want to buy for your anti G2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your anti Okay, and now let's take a Tom, listen That with is it. what you don't want to buy for your anti G2. Tom, that without? is what you don't want to buy for your anti Tom, that with? is what you don't want to buy for your anti G2. So compared to the beginning, it's a lot better. And um, the compressor does a good job. Tom, that Maybe is, let's take Tom, it That up. is what you don't want to buy for your anti-G2. Let's see what auto makeup will do. Um, let's go back Tom, to that zero. is what you don't want to buy for your anti-G2. You don't... Let's set... Uh, Tom, that, that is warning. what you don't want to buy for your anti G2. You don't want to buy the. Actually, I don't like that. It's getting a little bit hot, and I don't like that at all. But let's just go stick that with is this. What you don't want to buy for your anti G2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your anti G2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic microphone, so I can still use this one. But uh, for your anti G2. Okay, I think that's good. So let's leave it at that. Um, so to recap, I did a uh, voice denoise, which uh, got rid of the the sound, uh, the, the, the room tone. And then I did a EQ, which I did a little bit of, uh, you know, cleaning up the voice, but still um, leaving it um, somehow natural. So there is some tonal dynamic in my voice as I did that. And I also did some uh, compression. But uh, as I said, Subtle is great uh, if you don't overdo it and if you don't beat your audio to death. So it sounds like a radio show, um, but you have audio from a movie, um, then you're good to go. I mean, please don't, don't, uh, you know, don't make your audio sound like it's coming from a radio. Um, if someone in a movie is talking to another person, unless um, they are listening to radio, which is basically to get rid of all the frequencies, I think below 100, 150 to about 250 Hertz or even 300 Hertz. Um, yeah, so that's that. All right, so now that we are almost finished with this voice track, um, how do we actually export this thing? Because as I said before, our um, 
target loudness level has to be minus 13 dB LUFS um, at max. And the closer, the better, because the closer it is to minus 13 dB without clipping, um, the louder people will be able to hear it. And it will give you an advantage over other videos that aren't as loud as yours. So let's see what we can do. Um, I want to analyze uh, this track and I want to see what the loudness level is. So let's analyze that. And it's at minus 16.3 LUFS integrated. So uh, we could actually normalize it. Let's take a listen how it sounds now. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then so we could actually increase its loudness on the master track. But um, let's see what we can do. Um, first of all, let's make my master effects chain in here. And this is the uh, Ulean loudness meter, as you can see. And I want to see how loud this really is with this meter. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in and from the cable... Um... Okay, usually you want to do this with the loudest part of your video. So you can see that um, this is only at minus 18.8. I want to increase that a little bit. So that's why I have the master limiter in here. And the master limiter will limit the signal to not clip um, about a certain threshold. Um, but it's not that threshold. I mean, you can, you can actually watch videos about master limiters and limiters and stuff like that. Uh, Kenny Joya has some really good videos about that. I suggest you go to his channel and watch them. Um, my um, the, the reason I want to use that limiter uh, in a very specific manner um, is I don't want to um, have any distortion in my sound. In this voice, it's not that bad. I mean, you can't really distort. Um, but it gets obvious if you have some music in it, um, you can, uh, if you push it too far, you can distort. Um, so that's just a demonstration to show you, um, by lowering the threshold, you make it louder. So it works like a compressor with a infinite, um, with an infinite, It works like a compressor without the infinite range of uh, compression. Let's see. It has a infinite ratio. That's what I wanted to say. Its ratio would be infinite so that uh, it immediately uh, turns down the signal to not let it go over this threshold. But if we take a listen and I just pull it back. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes. You can actually see that it starts to clip when I push back on, th on the uh, threshold. Usually it's set to minus three. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, but the master limiter does something more. It um, looks ahead 200, uh, 200 milliseconds of the signal. So that's pretty cool. But I want to connect 
the threshold and the limit. Let's listen to what it does when I fumble around with the limit. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in and from... Basically, it tells it where or uh, when to, to limit. So usually it is at minus 0 0.1. And this is at zero at three point zero. So let's listen now. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, this is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in, and from the cable. Um, so as you can see, if you watch um, this right here, it goes. Um, it, it seems to go pretty pretty near to zero dB, which is again our minus 13 dB um, LUFS, but it's not enough. Uh, so let's just connect these two together. Again, you can watch the videos from Kenny Joya. They are pretty good. Really love them. And I just want to connect these two. Uh, so basically what I do is if I move the limit knob, it will turn down the threshold as well. And as you know, it the limiter will tell it uh, when to limit, but the threshold will make it louder. So I, it's a constant, it, it should make it louder, but uh, without distorting. That's the idea. So let's listen to it. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in and from the cable. Um... All right. So how do I sound right now? Do you hear the improvement? If you hear an improvement, that is not too... All right. So how do I sound now? Any better? The reason why you can hear me any better is because I actually changed um, just one thing. Well, actually two things. The one thing is this little guy right here, and this is called a Fathead. Now this is the Fathead Phantom. That is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in and from the cable. So there you can't really make out a difference because the music is usually the thing that uh, distorts. So um, let's just unlink these two. All right, let's put the limit back to minus 0 0.1. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in and from the cable. Um... All right, so how do I sound right now? Do you hear the improvement? If you hear an improvement, that is not too... All right, so how do I sound now? Any better? The reason why you can hear me any better is because I actually changed um, just one thing. So as you can see, it's pretty much playing around with the settings uh, limit and threshold to get as close to 13 dBs LUFS on your master setting. Um, I just leave it at that and let's listen to it with the set without the settings and with the settings. So again, this is the audio track without any of the settings that we did. This is the raw file, just normalized. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, this is actually in the microphone. So let's apply the effects. 
on the track. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. And now let's apply the final um, effects of the master. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's so um, on the master fader, you can actually do a lot of things. Um, I just put in these two effects, but you can also um, add another EQ. You know, if you found that uh, some frequencies need a little bit of work, you can still flatten them out. Um, let's see. Maybe a little bit air at about 5,000. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in and from the cable. Um... All right. So how do I sound right now? Do you hear the improvement? If you hear an improvement, that is not too... All right. So how do I sound now? Any better? The reason why you can hear me any better is because I actually changed um, just one thing. Well, actually two things. The one thing is this little guy right here. And this is called a Fathead. Now, this is the Fathead Phantom. That is what you don't want to buy for your NTG2. You don't want to buy the Fathead Phantom for your NTG2. This is very important because I made the same mistake. But on the other hand, I have a dynamic microphone, so I can still use this one. But uh, for your NTG2, you want to use the Fathead, well, the normal Fathead. And actually, let's do a little noise floor analysis. So I'm going to shut up now and... Let's take a listen with, uh, without the EQ on the master fader. I put this thing between the microphone and let's uh, activate it. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, this is actually in the microphone. It's a so again, it really depends on uh, what you're looking for, but I think that uh, sometimes. Uh, an EQ on the master fader just cleans out the signal some more. It's like a final filter before it gets into the master limiter. And then, uh, of course, you would make it as loud as possible to hit the minus 13 dB without clipping. Let's take a look at the signal again. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, this is actually in the mic. And as you can see, I changed the uh, overall, overall loudness of the track. So I would have to go back to the master limiter. And I think I just reduced it about 1 dB. Let's see. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, this is actually in the microphone, it's attached to the microphone, then the cable goes in and from the cable, um, all right, so how do I sound right now? Do you hear the improvement? If you hear an improvement, that is not to... I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in and from the cable... Um, I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is... Okay, so let's reduce it about... 5.6. I put this thing between the mic. Remember, you have to do this, of course, with the loudest part of your video because everything else is 
uh, not as loud anyways. Um, what you're trying to achieve is getting loud without clipping. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in. And as you can see, the true peak limiter minus 0 0.6, that's too loud. So you just got to bring it down a little. So let's use f um, about five. I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in and from the cable I put this thing between the microphone and the cable. Um, right, This is actually in the microphone. It's attached to the microphone. Then the cable goes in and... All right, doesn't seem too perfect uh, to be on minus 13. But remember, um, if it's always about minus 13 dB LUFS and um, doesn't you know change um, the loudness, you get a pretty boring, pretty hard to listen to um, audio track. It's all about dynamics and um, it's great. So, you know, the, the, the reason you want to pull it to minus 13 dB is of course you can have your video as loud as possible and people will understand that. But remember, you don't want to clip. Um, and it's sometimes better to have a few dynamics in your voice or in your overall audio as to not have any nuances in your video because that makes it just dead. So I hope this was helpful in some way, fashion or form. My name is Chris Klopfel and this was a short tutorial about my audio workflow and of course about the improvement of sound quality with the Fathead on a Rode NTG2. Oh, and I'm sorry to the Australian listeners. <laughs> I know I say, uh, roadie when it's in fact road i'm sorry i'm german still learning love you see you bye bye